Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of Eve University. I received your request to make a video explaining the basic principles of ship fitting. Since that is a deep and complex subject, for most of this episode you're going to have to deal with my droning on. This is the droning on. It is a Vexor class Galente cruiser that I last used to run missions sometime in late 2009, back when I was a new player in the game. So, the first thing you should do when you're looking at a ship and you're trying to figure out how to fit it is to show info on the ship and read what the bonuses are. Right. In the case of the Vexor, it's a 5% bonus to medium hybrid turret damage and 10% bonus to drone hit points damage and mining yield per skill level. I'm going to set this ship up for running level 2 missions. Actually, first things first, decide what you're going to use it for then look at the bonuses. So I'm going to set this up as level 2 mission runner and the bonuses are it's primarily a drone boat. Okay. Now on most ships the drones are a bit of an afterthought since the drone whatever drones you fit are usually independent of the modules and rigs that you put on. However in the case of drone boats I would say fit the drone bay first. Now the Vexer has a 100 cubic meter drone capacity and a 75 megabit per second drone bandwidth. Remember that for any drones other than fighters and fighter bombers, which can only fit on carriers and supercarriers, drones take as much bandwidth in megabits per second as they take up space in the drone bay in cubic meters. So this can fit 100 cubic meters worth of drones, but it can only send out about three quarters of that at any given point in time. Also remember that you can only send out one drone for each level of the drone's skill, so at most five different drones, not counting capitals or very rare collectible ships. So the drone bay. The first thing I typically throw in there is five light drones of some kind. Hobgoblins typically Though if you're running missions against the Angel Cartel, you'll want to use the Mimitar Warrior 1s instead. So this deals with frigates, since they have the easiest time trying to hit frigates. For anything larger than frigates, basically cruising her up usually, although I might also send this against Destroyer and up, I have two Ogres, two Hammerheads, and Hobgoblin. These five drones take up 75 cubic meters and 75 megabits per second bandwidth. You can right click on the drones and show info and you can look at the uh, the damage modifiers for the drones, uh, how much raw damage they do, if I can figure out where that number is on he here we go, thermal damage 48 hit points, uh, rate of fire 4 seconds. You can study those numbers and you will realize that this combination of five drones, basically two hammerheads and a hobgoblin, would do more damage than just a third ogre. So this is, given that I have drones level five, this is how I would uh, load out a Vexor. So I would group this as like Galente, and I would group this as combined arms. Remember that you can only group your drones while in space. So that's the most important thing on a drone boat, figure out what drone configuration you're bringing. For missions, you want to be able to sustain as much enemy fire as possible. So, I would throw on... Uh, oh, I forgot. Look at the slot configuration on a ship. A Vexor has five high slots, three medium slots, four low slots. Ships that have more low slots than mid slots will typically armor tank, Ships with more mid slots than low slots will typically shield tank. There are exceptions. You can go against this rule if, well, this guideline, really, if you know what you're doing. But I'm going to armor tank this one. So I'm going to have a medium armor repairer, since mission rats do low level damage per second over an extended period of time. While I'm busy trying to blast them to smithereens. I will also throw on a couple of armor kinetic hardeners. Which kinds depends upon uh, what mission you're going up against. Uh, you should read the mission ahead of time on evesurvival.org. 
if I can get this evesurvival.org and you click on mission reports and then you scroll down to see the particular mission uh, that the agent is offering you. You don't need to use the in-game browser and out-of-game browser will work just as well. So if I were going up against Garistas, Serpentis, or Mortars Legion, I would throw on a Kinetic and a Thermic. If it's Blood Raiders or Sanchez Nation missions, I would use Thermic and EM. If it's Angel Cartel or Rogue Drones, I would use Explosive Kinetic. Though you should read the particular mission that you're going up against. Mercenaries can be all over the place. Right. So the armor hardeners will increase your resistances to damage. Now this doesn't show the full effect of those increases because I'm in station and I can't turn these things on while in station. The armor whatever hardeners must be turned on in order to provide their benefit. So they're using capacitor. Speaking of, capacitor management is an important issue. Uh, if I offline everything, you'll note that at my skills, uh, this ship generates about 11.2 gigajoules per second, if I don't do anything to increase that. Okay. The hardeners will require a certain amount of gigajoules per second, and the medium armor repair also requires a certain amount of capacitor energy per, per second. Actually, 160 gigajoules every 9.6 seconds. There are modules I can throw on there to increase the capacitor regeneration rate. I would use the capacitor power relay and a couple of cap rechargers. Now my deficit is not quite so bad. With just the armor tanking modules going, mm, I'm at a deficit of negative 0.28 gigajoules per second. That's okay. I'm saving a mid-slot for an afterburner, because I like to control my range. Uh, I don't like the idea of things getting too close to me, lest they be capable of warp scrambling. Uh, speaking of, normally you would give some serious consideration to your weapons, but since this is a drone boat, most of your damage will come from your drones, not your own onboard weapons. With that said, uh, I've got about mm, a little bit under 640 megawatts remaining on the power grid. So if I wanted to make use of all four turret hardpoints, I'd have to choose weapons that would take up less than 160 megawatts each. Uh, that's a bit restrictive if, I, if you browse through the selections available in the market, especially if you don't have advanced weapon upgrades yet. The skill advanced weapon upgrades reduces the power grid requirement of turrets, but before you can inject it, you need weapon upgrades level 5. So I'm probably going to throw on just three turrets, 200mm railgun ones. These things take up 180 megawatts each, so I can only fit three of them. And with my remaining two high slots, I can throw on a small tractor beam and a salvager so I can do a little bit of my own salvaging while I'm right there in the mission. And this should be a reasonable setup for running level 2 missions. All I would need to do now is throw on some medium size hybrid charges and open the cargo hold, make sure my extra charges are in the cargo hold. You might want to get more, far more than a thousand charges if your onboard guns are your, the main source of your damage, but for a drone boat, it's my drones that'll be doing most of the damage. I'm just going to use these rail guns to get the attention of a mission rat and make it angry at me so that it doesn't pay attention to my drones. This should run level 2 missions reasonably well. Of course, it's not the only ship that can run uh, level 2 missions well. It's also not, this is also not the only way that you could fit out a Vexer. There are different ways that you could fit a Vexer. If you don't care about speed, but you do care about being able to run your tank cap stable, you could drop the afterburner and get a, another cap recharger 
actually, given the small size of the capacitor on this thing, it might be beneficial to throw on a medium capacitor battery. You'll have to play around with the fit. Uh, for my fellow Macintosh users, uh, there are there is a third-party program called Python Fitting Assistant. Uh, see if you can get that installed. Uh, it's a bit of a pain to get that installed, as I recall. Uh, for Windows users, you've got Evemon. So get one of those programs. Uh, you can play around with all sorts of hypothetical ship fittings and see how well it, that it might do, at least according to the statistics. In the meantime, thank you for watching.